for any severe eczema case, I almost always kill staph because even without yellow crust, over 90% of us with eczema have staph aureus overgrowth. Staph just loves eczema skin for some reason, and therefore killing staph is almost always a given. Now, the next question I get is then, and I think Isa just answer your questions also. Um, will I get resistant to staph aureus or not? I haven't seen this in practice using herbs, therefore the short answer is I don't think so. But I always rotate my herbs because by changing herbs up every two or three months, I avoid the staph becoming used to the, the same herbs. Now to answer Abby's question, so if I see high staph or high strep in the gut, sometimes I do see benefits in using some gentle antimicrobials to reduce the, the load. Because if we reduce the bad bacteria populations, it gives us more space for the good bacteria to grow in the place. It's like a forest. You have a plot of land, let's say like, you know, like X by X meters. If you reduce the bad bacteria, you give more space for the good guys to flourish, for your plants to grow. My favorite approach is actually not killing. I find that we are killing too much. Many of my clients come to see me with like having many rounds of like antibacterials, antibiotics, herbals, or osomocidicals, and they use even strong ones like oregano oil. And I find that we are killing too much. Yeah, recently we we were working with a client where he had worked with some top practitioners in the eczema field, and there was definitely a lot of killing as well and antimicrobials. Mm-hmm.